This is part 32 of AngularJS tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss controller as syntax in Angular. This is continuation to part 31, so please watch part 31 before proceeding. So far, in this video series, we have used dollar $scope as a mechanism to make the members of the controller available in the view. Let me explain what I mean. Let's flip to Visual Studio. Here, I have a new ASP.NET Web application project. To this project, I have added Angular script file, an HTML file, and a JavaScript file. Within this JavaScript file, you can see some JavaScript code. The first thing that we are doing here is creating an Angular module, and then we are creating a controller function. If you look at the name of the controller function, it is main controller, and into the controller function, we are injecting dollar $scope object. And the reason we are doing that here is because we want to make this message property available in the view. So we are attaching it to the dollar $scope object. Now to access this message property in the view, let's go to the view. So within this HTML page, let's say we have this H1 element. And on this H1 element, I'm going to specify ng controller directive. The name of the controller is main controller. And within this HTML element, we want to display the message property. To retrieve the message property that the controller has made available, we use a binding expression and then the name of the property. So let's save the changes. And when we reload this page, look at that, we see that message property available in the view. Hello, Angular. So, so far in this video series, we have been using this dollar $scope object as the mechanism to make the members of the controller available in the view. There's another way as well, and that is by using controller as syntax. With controller as syntax, there is no need to inject the dollar $scope object into the controller function. So, I can get rid of this dollar $scope object injection. And then to attach the message property, we use this keyword. Okay, so that's the change that is required within the controller function. And then within the view, we use the controller as syntax. So here we used ng dash controller directive, and we are specifying the name of the controller. Followed by that, we use the as keyword, and then whatever alias you want to provide. Let's say we want to give it an alias of main controller, main CTRL. So this is a reference pointing to an instance of the main controller. And to access the message property that this controller has made available, all you do is you use that reference, main controller, and then dot message. So let's save the changes. And when we reload this page, it should still continue to work exactly the same way as before. Now let's see how to use this controller as syntax within the example that we have been working with in the previous videos in this series. So let's flip to another instance of Visual Studio that's running. And this is our demo project that we have been working with. So what we want to do is use controller as syntax within this project. So the first change is going to be within our script file. So let's go to script.js file. And here we have our when functions, you know, which we have used to define routes. So here we have specified our controller. So here, controller, home controller as, let's say, we want to access it using home CTRL. So that's the reference. Similarly, for courses controller, it's going to be courses CTRL. And for students controller, it's going to be students CTRL and for student details controller let's make it student details CTRL all right so that's the first change within the when function we're using the controller as syntax and the next change is obviously within the controller functions themselves so with controller as syntax there is no need to inject dollar scope object so I can get rid of that from the home controller and then we use the this keyword the same idea with courses controller get rid of the scope object and use this keyword now if you look at students controller and student details controller this is a bit interesting here because within the controller we are using dollar http dot get and then here we have our then function and here we are attaching students property to the dollar scope object first of all 
again we don't need to inject dollar scope so I'm going to get rid of that but then I can't use this keyword in then function directly like this and I'll explain the reason why in just a bit for now let's include this keyword there and see how the app is going to behave so the same idea with student details controller let's get rid of dollar scope object and include this keyword here all right so that's the change within the controller functions themselves now we need to make uh, changes to the views also the partial templates also so let's first go to courses.html so now the alias for courses controller is courses ctrl which we have specified right here so within our controller as syntax courses ctrl so we'll have to use that to access courses property so courses controller dot courses and the same idea with home so home ctrl dot message and student details same idea student details dot student details ctrl dot student dot id and so on and so forth for the rest of the properties so let's go to our script file and copy the student details ctrl and then within our student details we specify student details ctrl dot student dot id student details ctrl dot student dot name same idea with gender and city all right and finally students and for students it is students CTRL alright so those are the changes required let's save all these changes and let's navigate to our index.html so now we are using controller as syntax so we are on the home page and the home page is working the same way as before let's go to courses courses are working the same way let's go to students and look at that students is not working as expected and that's because we're using this keyword so if we go to our script.js file so if you look at students controller function so the controller function is actually making an HTTP get call to a web service and then we have our then function here within the then function we're using this keyword so here this keyword is actually pointing to the window object when the control comes into this then function this keyword here is actually pointing to the window object and not to an instance of this control and that's why you know it's not working as expected so to make this work what we have to do is within the controller function here I'm going to create a variable I'm going to call it VM um, standing for view model so basically whatever we are specifying here that's a model for the view so that's why people generally prefer to name this variable view model because it's essentially that so variable view model equals this so now at this point it is pointing to an instance of this controller and then we can use this VM variable to attach whatever properties we want to attach that we want to make available in the view so now instead of using this keyword here we can use VM and now this should work same idea within our student details controller so first I'm going to create a variable here I'm going to call it VM equals this and then we use VM dot student so let's save those changes and let's go ahead and reload this page let's actually save all the changes and let's reload this page and look at that students work and when we go to student details that work as well so here we're using the dollar scope object with dollar scope object we need to inject it into the controller function and then we attach members to it that we want to make available in the view in the view we simply use a binding expression um, and then use the property name that we have attached to the scope object and with controller as syntax there is no need to inject the dollar scope object we use this keyword to attach the members that we want to make available in the view
and then within the view itself we use controller as syntax and then we use the reference of the controller to access the properties that we have made available uh, in the controller and when you have a call to a function like this um, you know a web service call within that then function we can't use this keyword like this and that's because this here is actually pointing to a vendor object and not to an instance of this controller and another important point to keep in mind at the moment you know look at the way we are using controller as syntax you know wherever we are defining our controller you know basically specifying our controller you know here is where we are defining our roots so here we are using controller as syntax okay home controller as home CTRL this is one way another way is by using so the controller is home controller and then we can use another property here controller as and then you can specify whatever you want to use as the reference so we want to use home CTRL and the same idea goes here and now we don't have to use as courses controller we can use controller as and then we can specify a courses controller there same idea here students controller And finally, our student details controller. All right, so let's save all those changes. And when we reload this page, everything should continue to work exactly the same way as before. In our next video, we'll discuss how this controller as syntax can make our code more readable when working with nested scopes. Thank you for listening and have a great day.